You're listening to Microbin Radio, progressively elevating the conversation. Coming up next, personalities and profiles. Here's your host, Michael S. Robinson. And a very good afternoon to you. Welcome to Personalities and Profiles here on Microbin Radio. I'm Michael Robinson. It's a pleasure to have your company with us today. We're streaming live from our studios and we're also live on Facebook. So just look for Microbin Radio. Podcasts of this and prior shows are available on SoundCloud and microbinradio.com. We are a progressive internet radio station designed to elevate the conversation. So simply download our app from the App Store or Google Play. Our weekly shows, Personalities and Profiles, highlights featured guests who are making a difference within our communities across the country with life stories that are going to inspire you. And today, our featured guest is Mo Carrick. She's an author, speaker, and workplace expert. She describes what she does simply, I help people do their best work. Mo co-authored a book with Cami Dunaway entitled Fit Matters, How to Love Your Job. She's the principal and co-founder of Momentum, Inc., a certified B Corporation and consulted for, consulting firm dedicated to the vision of creating a world that works for everyone using business as the force for good. She's also a TEDx speech tree speaker and grounds her approach in unifying an undeniable truth, which is successful work is dependent upon human relationships. Welcome to the show, Mo. Thank you, Michael. My pleasure to be here. Thanks for being with us again today. Uh, you are, full disclosure, you were on my show last Saturday when we were talking about organizational uh, cultures and how one can use the techniques in organizing a culture to organize one's personal life. So thank you very much for that awesome discussion. So tell us a bit about yourself. Tell us about Mo Carrick. Let's see. What's interesting to talk about uh, with me? Um, I am a very um, uh, happy Oregon resident, Oregonian. I have lived here for the past 25 years in Bend, Oregon. I'm a consultant, as you said, and a coach. Um, really excited right now by the the conversations we're having about the, the book that you mentioned, Fit Matters. I'm amazed at how everybody has a fit story, um, including me. Mm -hmm. I feel really grateful for the fit I have in my work today. Um, I'm also the mother of three. My children are almost grown, 24, 21, and 16. So I'm at the end of that particular part of my, of my role, getting close. And um, what else would you like to know? <laughs> Well, we'll talk a bit about your book because it's very interesting and I think it brings a lot to the table in terms of uh, the idea of fit. You know, it's a holistic approach which obviously uh, from being an entrepreneur for over 25 years, I know how important it is to have not just a fit workforce but a fit organization and how we can help companies, especially small businesses because, you know, we have to remember that small businesses are the number one job creators in this country and uh, they're over 51% of our GDP, right? So most people in this country work for small, pe small businesses, most people meaning over 50% of the population. But yet small businesses are somewhat dysfunctional when it comes to the idea of having organizational structure, organizational uh, protocols that allow them to function function, not dysfunction, right, in a, in a way that allows them to grow and thrive and at the same time helps the workforce become empowered to be the best people they can be. So you talk about that and I, I love what you have to say. But one of the things that you said is that um, your mission is to dedicate the vision of creating a world that works for everyone. Now, what is your vision of that? What does that look like? For you? Gosh, that's a great question, uh, Michael. And I think what I mean by that is, wouldn't it be great? I mean, if you can just imagine the possibilities that everybody at work all around the world is capable of bringing their highest and best work to work every day, you know, that would activate so much greatness 
in terms of our productivity in small and large businesses. It would create healthy communities where people are feeling energized and positive about what they do every day. And it would create healthier families and connections between people every day. So I think when I think about a world that works for everyone, that's really what I'm looking for is to say, what if we approach the workplace, every workplace, in a way that allowed people to bring their highest and best to work every day. Right. And that responsibility, I think, falls on the shoulder of the employee, right? And on the shoulder of the organization at the same time in order to create that holistic work environment uh, for all employees. Um, we'll talk about that later. So right now, I just want to focus on you and your, your organization, Momentum. What do you do in terms of uh, your company for your clients? Yeah, we like to say we're a small but mighty firm. So our work <laughs> That's a good thing. Really, <laughs> right? It transects three areas that are very connected. Okay. Um, culture, leadership, and team development. Um, the work we do, the actual work at hand, is often individual and team coaching. We do quite a bit of, of assessment, culture assessment, leadership assessment, team mm -hmm. assessment, and then the follow-on work to help organizations and the people in them activate insights uh, that they may have garnered about how they may want to do things, how they roll, how they want to lead. Some of that might include strategy consultations. So um, I would say at our highest and best at Momentum, we're about partnering with organizations over a period of time. So we, we prefer longer term engagements to be able to dig into meaningful change in a company um, to help the, the leaders or the owners of the organization meet their results um, uh, that they're seeking. We don't do a lot of one off transactional work because we find it doesn't it doesn't really help with the changes that people want to implement. Right. So my thoughts are, in order to be teachers, we have to be students ourselves. What brought you to this journey of starting this company and also writing the book? Yeah. Well, the two different stories, I think, but they're probably related. So I started the company because I wanted a different lifestyle. So lifestyle is one of our six elements of fit. And I was working as a consultant for another company. I loved that work. It was really interesting, but it required me to travel about 250 days a year. I was at that time a, a young mother. I had two small children then, hadn't had my daughter yet. And I felt like uh, from a lifestyle perspective, I wanted to be more grounded in community um, and I was willing to still to travel, but I didn't want to travel quite so much. So it uh, led me to exploring and thinking about how could I start a consultancy that would facilitate a lifestyle that worked uh, more, uh, more positively for me while also doing the work uh, that I loved and that I wanted. And similarly, writing the book really came from my partnership with Cami, my co-author. Cami was a client. She was a senior vice president at Nintendo of America. I was working with the, uh, the executive team there, and Cami came in from Yahoo. It was her dream job. I think she thought she'd be there for the rest of her, her life, potentially retiring there. And in the process of coaching her as well as the other executives, she came to a realization over about two years that it really wasn't a, a good fit for her. And um, in the privilege of that uh, client um, coach relationship, we had this idea of, gosh, this fit thing really matters. And, um, and how do we describe it? Mm -hmm. Because there was then, as there is now, a lot of energy to the great places to work magazine surveys that make it look like there's good companies and bad companies. And our experience has been, and certainly Cammy's was, it's not a bad company, nor is she a bad employee. Mm -hmm. It's just a bad match. Um, and so we had an idea, what if we write a book about that someday? Neither one of us had the bandwidth to do the research at that time, but um, we, we tucked into it uh, again about two years ago, and, and the result is, is the book that's just hit the shelves in May. Right. We'll talk about that in a bit because you've got six essential uh, elements to work fit. And I think that they are very important to uh, bring that to our audience. Um, it, it's interesting that you're talking about the realization that you're able to find a job or a career that blends with your lifestyle and your your aspirations and also your passion because you're obviously passionate doing this. I've seen a lot of your TED Talks and certainly you have a uh, a grounded approach and a very sort of a basic approach that resonates with everybody. So for people listening, right, because there are a lot of people that are living unhappy lives, doing jobs that they literally hate, but they have to do it because, listen, the rent has to be paid 
uh, utility bills have to pay, be paid and whatnot, car payments and so on and so forth. So a lot of times people feel that the job is necessary in order to, to get to the end means, which is you know, paying their bills and so on and so forth. How do you, as an individual, listening to this show, right, uh, living a life where you have to pay these bills, but you have this job you hate, you have this mon Monday morning blues, you know, hey, I don't want to get up on Monday morning. We talked about that on, on Saturday, right? Uh, how do you pivot from that lifestyle to one where you're able to function in a way where you feel happiness and joy and fulfillment, right? And at the same time, being able to pay your bills. Yeah, I wish there was a switch we could push or a button, right, Michael? Right, just exactly. Say, oh, okay, this is going to That turn. would be easy for everybody, for <laughs> <Right>. sure. <laughs> do it for me. This would turn me on to be able to do this. I think it's kind of more of a journey, isn't it? Um, but step one often is being willing to look myself in the mirror or yourself in the mirror if you're the one out there who's so unhappy and say, you know what, what about this exactly is really not working for me? Um, I know I need to work. I need to support myself. But if this job itself is making me miserable, let me better understand why. You know, what is it exactly that's making me miserable? Because when we can focus and get more clear on that, we can kind of look in two directions. One direction is, is there something about me, about the way I'm doing things, about my choices and my opportunities that I can change that would help me find more fulfillment at work in the future? The other body of question might be, is there something about them is there something about this particular employer or this particular job that actually I could change um, through some actions of my own to either get a different job at the same company or move into a different company? Now, knowing that there's not a magic switch, so it's not going to happen overnight, but what are the steps I might need to take? Um, and a good example, I had a, a, um, a friend one time who I was talking about this very issue. She was super unhappy, and she said, you know, I actually realized that the career that I picked, in her case, it was a nursing career. She said, it's, the nursing is not that fulfilling for me. She was working nights on a surgical center at a hospital, and she said, I thought I really wanted to help people in this, and now here I've found myself just doing it for the money, which is a pretty tough go, even though we need the money. It's not a strong motivator for most of us on its own. Mm -hmm. And so what I admired about her courageous journey was being able to look at that and say, you know what, what about this act exactly don't I like? And she actually came to understand that she, A, she didn't like nights. She really wanted to get out of working the night shift. That mm -hmm. wasn't working very well. She also discovered that she still really liked nursing, but she wasn't thriving in a primary care environment in an acute hospital setting. So she was able to get some classes and talk to some colleagues that were working in an office, an outpatient office setting uh, in a family practice. And she made that move. She's been extremely content, still practicing in her profession, but in a very different environment and feeling a lot more fulfilled with those choices. It took her about a year mm -hmm. to get the credentials and connections that she needed to make that move. But just knowing that she was working towards that allowed those tough uh, nights to, to go um, a little more easily with a plan to transition. Excellent. Okay, we're going to be back after the break to talk more about the six essentials that uh, we can use in order to make our organizations more functional. We'll be right back here on Microbin Radio's Personality and Profile. You're listening to Personalities and Profiles here on Microbin Radio, progressively elevating the conversation. Your daughter is having trouble learning French. Do you A, hire a tutor? Bonjour. B, enforce a French-only rule at home. Or C, watch some foreign films. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. I'm Diane Keaton, and I was diagnosed with skin cancer when I was 21. But, you know, it didn't seem like a big deal to me. And then it happened again and again. And finally, you know, I got the drift, and I started wearing sunblock. Duh. But you know, it's not so simple. 
with melanoma because melanoma is the deadliest form of skin cancer. So won't you please join me in a nationwide effort to stop this killer by visiting itsthatworthit.org. Okay, do you have that? itsthatworthit.org, okay? Uh, you know, as a kid, I knew what my parents did, but that world doesn't even exist anymore. If you don't know you need the skills, the education, if you're not exposed to it, how are you going to succeed? My role models, lawyers, engineers, they showed me, they gave me a belief in myself. And that's junior achievement, man. What can I say? Volunteer. Change your world. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mine. This is it. First impression. My way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Now, back to the show. Hi there. Welcome back. You're listening to Personalities and Profiles here on Microbin Radio. My guest today is Mo Carrick. She's the principal and founder of Momentum Inc. and co-author of the book, Fit Matters. Mo, we talked about the book last Saturday and uh, you had six elements that I thought were fantastic, right? I wanna share that with our audience today. Uh, let's talk about what the book is all about and then go into the six elements that you mentioned in the book. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. The, um, the book is really about, it's written for job seekers or the, any one of the 77% of people out there who are so miserable, like we were talking about before. And um, it's intended to be a practical kind of how-to guide about what do I do if I'm not feeling like I'm thriving in my job. And it, it, it offers a variety of tools and techniques. And there's really two main parts. The first section of the book looks at personal awareness. How do I understand myself more richly and more deeply so that I can um, make the change that I may want to make in my work situation? And the second is to offer ways that you can assess a company from the outside in a more practical way. We know that's hard to do. You know, when you have a one hour job interview and maybe you've um, met a few of the colleagues that you'll be working with, it's hard to make that quick decision to say, do I want to join that company in a full-time way? So the six elements that that part of the book really um, focuses on are job fit, financial fit, relationship fit, culture fit, meaning fit, and lifestyle fit. And I can tell you more about what those really mean to right. us, but that's the gist. Right. So let's talk a bit about the first one, uh, the job fit and the lifestyle fit. Uh, the first two. Uh, let's discuss that a little bit. Uh, how does one figure that out on an interview? Oh, gosh. You know, the, the job fit is usually somewhat of a straightforward one because it has to do with am I qualified for this job? You know, have I done it before? Do I have the skills? Do I have the right education and degree? Um, have I done a similar job before? So we're often looking at things like skill set, expertise, level of competence. You know, can I meet the requirements of this job? The lifestyle fits quite different. That's where we're looking at. Does this job or this workplace feel like it will meet my personal needs in terms of the life that I want? And in particular with lifestyle, we're looking at things like, you know, how long is the commute every day? What amount of the hours am I expected to be in the office? Is there a lot of travel required? What are the expectations around staying late in the evenings or working weekends? We all have really different needs and boundaries around how our life can work outside of work. And so the lifestyle dimension of fit really goes after that aspect. And the way we inquire about that is by asking in the interview and then also observing and hopefully ultimately talking to other people that are working there to find out how does the lifestyle play out in practice. Because we all know that sometimes what a company promotes 
is the way they roll in that dimension isn't necessarily how it actually is day to day. Right, exactly. And uh, having been in the employment business for 21 years, I know exactly what that means. The reality is that it goes both ways, right? Because companies want to know that if they're hiring you, you're not just the person with the skill sets and the job qualifications, but you certainly uh, is somebody that they can live with for eight, nine hours per day. You know, there's somebody, you're somebody who can blend into the cultural uh, nuances of the organization. So what they're looking for all, also is that likability factor, right? That do I like Michael factor or do I like Mo? You know, is, is she somebody that will, will be controversial or will blend into our organization? So on one hand, I think an employer is looking to decipher all that information from the employee. But what you're saying is on the other hand, the employee should be looking to sort of decipher that information from the employer, whether it's directly or indirectly through the, uh, the work force that, occur, that, that is currently on hand. So um, what we want people to recognize is that when you are taking a job, you know, the actuality is that yes, you want to be able to get a job that complements your skill sets, that complements your lifestyle, but that you're going to be comfortable with, you know, that you're going to be able to work in a way that allows you to feel that this is really not a job, but, it, but it's fun, right? So how do you engender, how do you ensure that you get that sort of feedback from either the interviewer or the potential co-workers that you might be working with? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a detective exercise, isn't it? You know, you're going on LinkedIn, you're, you're trying to find out, does anybody have a connection there? Has anyone worked there? Maybe you're talking to their vendors or suppliers, you're getting from getting some conversations informally with past employees as well as current, and you're saying, hey, how did they roll? How did that work for you? Tell me more about what you loved, what was sometimes hard for you. And I think, I just want to underline one thing, Michael, you know, the fit equation is interesting because we're we want to feel like we are compatible. This is particularly true in the relationship element of fit, but we also don't want to just look at a job in terms of fitting in, and that's true for the employer too, because just fitting in means that we really get along, and sometimes what we want is an environment that's gonna challenge us and where conflict can be handled in a healthy way, and certainly for companies, they don't wanna run the risk of hiring people just like the leadership or just like the founders, because then you end up without very much innovation or creativity, so I don't want a mistake um, finding good work fit with being kind of exactly like the employer. And so that's part of what you're trying to discern as you talk to people and observe the organization is to say, are these people maybe not necessarily like me, but are they people that I feel I could have healthy debate with and make productive conversations um, successful in solving problems together? And as you said, would I be comfortable living and being with them for nine, 10 hours a day? Right, exactly. And most organizations are based on uh, the culture that comes from the top to the bottom, right? There's an organizational structure, and the titular head is the one who kind of sets the tone of that organization. Um, many small businesses, and I was going back to that from my, my uh, beginning uh, conversation with you, many small businesses do not necessarily spend a lot of time in setting uh, the protocol for what their business model is in terms of how the organization should be run. W what could you tell businesses, a small business that is listening to this, that they can do to make their organization more friendly, more accepting, more holistic for potential employees mm -hmm. and employees who are working in that space. Because there's so much dysfunction that is happening right now. You just have to turn on the television and you see uh, what's happening in, in, uh, in the news. So you know that if that happens there, obviously it happens in the smallest of companies. What can we do in terms of organizations to allow holistic, healthy working environments for people to feel that they can thrive and prosper? Yeah, it's such a, another great question. What I see really matter, and this is true for small companies, mid-sized companies, big companies, even sole proprietors, is to, from the beginning as a founder of an organization, to be considering the culture you want to create. How do I want my company to roll? And in, in particular, that means what do I value and what do I want to model in my organization as what 
we value together um, so that you're attracting people who are comfortable adhering to those values. And that's the root from which culture comes. And oftentimes, especially when we're in startup as an entrepreneur in a small company, we're so focused on the product or the service and just bringing the money in the door that we sometimes forget to say, wait a second, I'm pretty soon or now ready to hire some talent. And what do I want to um, have this partnership or this entity be like from a culture perspective? Because our belief, my belief is certainly that all behavior in an organization derives from the cultural principles and values that they hold. And so we want to be thoughtful about it. We don't want to leave it to default by accident that we end up with a certain culture. We want to be more um, more careful and proactive to say, actually, how do I want this company to be culturally um, so that I can attract the kind of people that are going to be really thriving in that culture? Right, exactly. And uh, I think at first, begins with a mission statement, right? A company needs to have that idea, as you said, of what do I want to represent uh, my company in terms of how it's seen by the public, how it's seen by potential customers, how my employees see what we're doing. Are we uh, holistic in terms of sustainability? Are we about saving the world, you know? So that whole idea has to be clarified in a mission statement, and I encourage employers to do that. And uh, a lot of small businesses that I've consulted with personally have been, like you said, you know, the bottom line is running the company on a daily basis and not focusing on uh, the idea that you need to have this, this core mission that's driven by an idea that's communicated to your employees, that is understood by your customers, and that is felt by your customers, obviously. So that idea, I think, is very important in terms of, uh, uh, you know, moving a, a company forward. Um, so, what about ourselves, right? Because we hold companies re accountable in terms of saying the organization should have a culture that's holistic. What should we bring to the organization as employees to make that company better and to make our lives better? Yeah. Well, I think most of us at a fundamental level, Michael, really crave adding value, right? We want to contribute to something bigger than ourselves. So I think that's one thing we should be conscious about bringing is to say, you know, what's my my superpower? What is it I bring that is perhaps unique or different that this organization is going to benefit by having and kind of staying centered and confident in that um, and bringing it in an open hearted way to the organization so that they're better when we leave, you know, if, if we leave. And that superpower is going to be different for everyone. And I don't mean the superpower necessarily of the skill that you bring, but more, you know, what what is it you bring to add value to a team? Are you a good connector? Are you energetic? Are you a great problem solver? Are you a good listener? Um, what kind of, of, of qualities more in the connected to your essential humanity um, are you bringing to an organization that is going to help them uh, grow and thrive and meet their mission? Um, and I think the more, the more deeply you know that and are clear on that, the, the easier it's going to be for you to bring that to the organization. And I'm not talking about being arrogant, like, oh, I'm so great at this, but more being self-aware and saying, wow, I actually do believe that I have some gifts to offer and I'm going to bring them here and let them show up in an authentic and real way. Absolutely. What's next for Mo Carrick? Well, right now I'm um, enjoying summertime. Uh, we're on the book tour, doing lots of interviews, which is very fun. I've got some uh, a nice beach vacation coming up at the end of the month with all the family, uh, which I'm looking forward to, nice. and um, getting ready for fall, which is my my favorite season. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> where are you going to in terms of the beach? We are going over to the Oregon coast. We're going to be uh -huh. in um, kind of near Newport Beach in a little place we've been before. The Oregon coast is quite wild, uh -huh. and uh, it's not exactly like laying on the beach, but it's wonderful walking and running, and it'll be nice to have the family all together. Well, I love the work you're doing, so keep it up, and uh, keep Thanks, up the TED Michael. Talks. They're wonderful. Thank you so much, and thanks for your time. I love the show, Absolutely. and I really appreciate the opportunity to share a bit of my story with you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for being with us. We've all come right. to the end of another Personalities and Profiles here on Microbin Radio. Thank you all for tuning in today. We invite you to follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Microbin Radio. Remember, podcasts of this and prior shows are available on SoundCloud and microbinradio.com. Coming up next... Andy Weiser will be talking about real estate at 2 o'clock right here on Microbin Radio, so don't go anywhere. 
Don't forget to catch me this Saturday at 2 p.m. on AM 970 The Answer in New York City for The Michael S. Robinson Show. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm Michael Robinson. Remember, this is your time. Use it wisely. This program is sponsored by Microbit Incorporated.